Kim, um, just on your uh, fear piece, it's always good to be careful, um, but we do have a silver cord wrapped around our leg. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. unless that's severed, and, and it can be, yes. um, you, you have less to worry about. It's more like um, things would start messing with you if you were gone too long, but you, would, you will be able to find your way back. Um, and so we had some sort of, we had a technical question. Um, Lisa, I don't, I think the answer to your question about, is there a crystal for the seven people involved in your group to work with? Um, I'm sure it'll find you guys just in the way that we were talking about some of these stones uh, find us if not because it's a group of seven maybe it's better to get everybody's intention on paper and then throw that out to the universe to see what comes back um, and and see what crystal frequency develops from that that might be an idea and then um, Denise was asking I don't need glasses to read this, but it, I feel like I do. Um, <laughs> are seers stones good stones to practice seeing or tra traveling timelines? Should one wait to attempt this with more experience? Um, I have my two cents on that as far as the stones and the experience. So um, seer stones are great for time traveling because they're good for scrying. It's like one thing leads to another. Um, and so you'll, through the reflections, you'll see a lot of different things, a lot of different opportunities. And that's where the time to travel piece comes from. I don't know that they're great to travel into most, and Kim can offer her experience on this. Most of the travel into stones tend to be clear. And seeing stones just have their face cut off and they're still opaque in the back. So there's nothing to go through at that point. Um, and I wish I had an example here. I'm sure you can Google what a seeing stone is. Um, but uh, that's my two cents on that. And as far as the experience piece, Denise, you're already time traveling every time you go to sleep, every time you have a memory. Every time you engage with something that is not in the present moment, you are time traveling. So uh, consider yourself certified. <laughs> Kim, what are your thoughts on that question um, if I didn't stray too far from it? Yeah, no, I completely agree. Everybody does time travel in some shape or form. Most of it's unconscious um, and they don't know they're doing it. Um, but uh, I was just looking because I. I have a seer stone somewhere. I just saw, I'm just trying to remember where I put it. So it's good. Yeah, it's time traveled. It's out of here. It's in another. Right. It's a <laughs> time out. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's a look in only. And then it brings stuff up. Yeah. There's no way. I have not found any way to go through the stone just because that opaque in the back almost makes it like a wall. Mm -hmm. So you, you can't get through it. Um, but the, the clear stone. Yeah. All the stones, except for Harald. Um, all the stones that I use to travel are all clear quartz of some sort that clearly have a door. So it allows me, it, it, you know, the energy comes in and we go through it and then there's an exit in the back. So yeah, I've, I've never tried it with anything else. Not that I've thought about it, but I mean. Now, if you do want to get into your seer stone, I would consider it like at, at my worst empath moments where I just needed to cut the energies off, separate, um, getting into a seer stone is great because you're just going to sit there. <laughs> you're not going anywhere. <laughs> it's like a cocoon, but that's as far as my experience has taken me with those. So. Um, but uh, how are you feeling, Benita? Welcome back. <laughs>